Good evening, everyone. Let me thank the organizers of the CMC Medicine Annual Conference for giving me this opportunity to present before you here today. The topic that has been given to me is uh, clinical pearls, non-diabetic renal disease in diabetic patients. So the aim of this talk is to be uh, talking about the different non-diabetic renal diseases that can occur in diabetic patients and how to differentiate non-diabetic renal disease from diabetic nephropathy. The outline of my talk, I shall talk about the natural course of diabetic nephropathy. We shall look at whether diabetic retinopathy can help predict diabetic nephropathy. We shall look for certain clues of non-diabetic renal disease. We shall uh, look at the types of non-diabetic renal diseases that are commonly seen in diabetic patients. And then in the end, we shall look at some case scenarios. The natural course of uh, diabetic nephropathy has been uh, de described uh, as per the Mogensen staging of diabetic nephropathy, where Classically, it progresses through stages one to stage five. Stage one of hyperfiltration, followed by a gradual but steady decline in GFR over the years. Stage one is the stage of hyperfiltration. Stage two is silent nephropathy when the GFR returns back to normal. Stage three, the stage of incipient nephropathy where you first start having microalbuminuria. Stage four of overt nephropathy where you start developing macroalbuminuria and which gradually progresses to end stage renal disease, stage five. So the generally the onset of uh, microalbuminuria is usually about five years after the onset of diabetes. The stage of macroalbuminuria takes about 10 to 15 years and about 20 to 25 years to reach end stage renal disease. Now this has been classically described in type one diabetics. In type two diabetics, it may be difficult to extrapolate uh, this to type two diabetics and to determine which stage the patient is at presentation because uh, we may not know the onset of type two diabetes. But in a type 1 diabetic, based on the onset of uh, the disease, we may be able to predict which stage the patient is in. Can we look at the rate of uh, annual decline in GFR and say whether it's a diabetic kidney disease or a non-diabetic kidney disease? So among type 1 diabetes, uh, diabetics in this study from the Jocelyn uh, Clinic, uh, which prospectively studied patients over several years, so these are patients who had normal renal functions and subsequently were followed for seven to 18 years. They found that the gen in general, the in majority of the patients, the rate of drop of GFR was around one to two, up to about three to three ml per minute per year. And they were classified as slow uh, decliners or these patients did not have a significant renal decline. Patients who had more than three ml per minute drop in GFR were considered to have a moderate renal decline. And patients who had a drop in GFR of more than 7 ml per minute were considered as rapid decline. Rapid decline. But most of these patients actually had a very slow or a moderate uh, renal decline. So the natural course suggests that in patients with at least in type 1 diabetic nephropathy, the drop in GFR should not be more than 3 to 4 ml per minute per year for majority of the patients. But what about type 2 diabetics? It has been increasingly recognized that type 2 diabetics have different trajectories of decline in renal functions. They may follow the classical pathway of uh, progressing from normal albinuria to microalbuminuria to macroalbuminuria, and then followed by a drop in GFR. That's the classical diabetic kidney disease. There is a subset of patients who progress from normal to microalbuminuria, but they may have regression of their albuminuria. There is also a subset of patients who have a rapid decline. Rather than going through the stages of uh, albinuria, they may have a rapid decline just in their GFR per se. And it is also increasingly recognized that there are some patients with diabetic kidney disease who don't have significant proteinuria, but they have just a slow but steady decline in GFR. So there are there is a different uh, spectrum or there is significant heterogeneity among the type 2 diabetics in their rate of uh, decline in GFR. Now, this is because there are multiple other factors in type 2 diabetics which affect the rate of decline in GFR. The most important factor is hypertension and the presence of proteinuria itself predicts the rate of decline in GFR. Other factors such as obesity, uh, smoking, established cardiovascular risk factors may also have an Im impact on these patients. So patients with, who are normotensive and normoalbuminuric have the least decline in GFR, but each of these risk factors adds on to the uh, as a risk factor to the which affects the rate of decline of GFR. Patients who are hypertensive have, have a higher decline in GFR as compared to normotensive patients. And even within the groups, patients who have proteinuria have a higher decline of GFR as compared to patients who do not have 
proteinuria. So there are multiple factors which affect the rate of decline of GFR in type 2 diabetes. Having said that, we need to have a broad uh, framework to say what is rapid uh, rate of decline of GFR. In patients who are normoalbuminuric, a GFR of less than 1 ml per minute per year is what is expected. This is uh, similar to the age-related decline in GFR. Patients who are untreated proteinuria with other risk factors, poorly controlled blood pressures, would have would be expected to have a rate of decline of GFR more than even up to 8 to 12 ml per minute per year. Whereas patients with proteinuria who are on treatment, as seen in the renal trial of losartan, the rate of decline of GFR can be reduced to about 4 to 5 ml per minute per year. And this is generally the cutoff that is uh, given to define a rapid fall in GFR. The KDIG or the KDGO de defines rapid decline in GFR as a rate more than 5 ml per minute per year or a rate of decline of GFR more than 4% per year. So in these patients, you should suspect a non-diabetic renal disease. What about diabetic retinopathy? Can it predict diabetic nephropathy? Um, as the stage of proteinuria increases, the prevalence of diabetic ret uh, retinopathy increases. In this study from uh, uh, Shankara Netralia, patients with macroalbinuria had uh, there was a 60% prevalence of diabetic retinopathy as compared to only 14% in patients with normal albinuria. But can you predict, can diabetic retinopathy predict nephropathy? Uh, so there have been multiple studies and meta-analysis of studies have been uh, done, which have shown that generally the positive predictive value of diabetic retinopathy and even the negative predictive value for predicting a non-diabetic renal disease is generally poor. It's about 70% and 69%. Presence of proliferative diabetic retinopathy has a higher positive predictive value for uh, predicting a diabetic nephropathy, but the negative predictive value continues to be poor in type 2 diabetic patients. The correlation with uh, diabetic retinopathy is much higher in type 1 diabetes and majority of patients who have diabetic retinopathy will have an underlying diabetic nephropathy in type 1 diabetics. So how can we improve the predictive value of diabetic retinopathy for diagnosing non-diabetic renal disease? So this is an early study from our institute which showed that uh, com you combine the clinical features along with the absence of a diabetic retinopathy. So this is looking at the absence of a diabetic retinopathy in predicting non-diabetic renal disease. So the positive predictive value of an absence of diabetic retinopathy to predict non-diabetic renal disease, if you looked at patients with just kidney failure, then it, it had a very poor positive predictive value. But in the correct clinical scenario, so if the patient presented with a nephr nephritic syndrome, a nephrotic syndrome, or a rapidly progressing renal failure, in those sort of patients, the absence of a diabetic uh, retinopathy was able to predict non-diabetic renal disease. What are the other clues for the presence of a non-diabetic renal disease? Patients with active urine sediments, significant microscopic hematuria or pyuria. Patients with gross hematuria, patient who presents with sudden rapid deterioration of renal functions, sudden appearance of nephrotic proteinuria in a patient who did not have proteinuria previously, impaired renal function with low-grade proteinuria or absence of proteinuria. I said that this is a subset of patients of, of type 2 diabetes who can have this presentation. But again, uh, if patients do not have any significant proteinuria, you would suspect a non-diabetic renal disease. Absence of retinopathy, as I mentioned in the current correct clinical scenario, and in type 1 diabetics uh, with diabetes less than 5 years duration who have proteinuria, you should suspect a non-diabetic renal disease. What are the types of non-diabetic renal diseases that are seen? So you can classify them as glomerular diseases and non-glomerular diseases. Glomerular diseases, depending on the presentation, if it's a nephritic syndrome, it can be an IgA nephropathy or an infection-related glomerular nephritis. Nephrotic syndrome, membranous nephropathy is common. Uh, rapidly progressing renal failure, you should think of an anchor vasculitis, SLE. Um, but by far, much more common are the non-glomerular renal diseases. In hospitalized patients, uh, the cause of renal decline can be an acute kidney injury because of infections, because of sepsis, contrast exposure can cause decline in GFR. Urinary tract infections, recurrent urinary tract infections, a history of recurrent urinary tract infections should be asked for in all patients who present with a rapid decline in GFR. Ischemic nephropathy in patients who have a bland urine sediment, no significant proteinuria, poorly controlled hypertension, always consider uh, renal artery stenosis. Ischemic, whether ischemic nephropathy is contributing to the re decline in GFR. Obstructive uropathy in elderly patients, patients who, are, uh, who have underlying DPH, long-standing diabetes who may have lower urine tract uh, uh, symptoms, think of a diabetic cystopathy.
and by far non glomerular diseases are much more common than glomerular diseases so the appropriate history should be taken when somebody presents with a rapid decline in gfr coming to case scenarios these are some real life case scenarios that we faced over the past few months and we shall see what uh, helped us in differentiating non diabetic renal disease in these patients the first case is that of a 43 43 year old male diabetic and hypertensive for 6 years who presented with a sudden abrupt generalized swelling of the whole body which uh, rapidly progressed to involve the whole body and then subsequently presented with progressive uh, dyspnea on exertion for one month duration he did not have any documented micro or macrovascular complications in the past examination wise his vitals were stable he had pitting pedal edema to the knees he had facial edema and he had decreased breath sounds in the left infra and uh, axillary and infrascapular areas fundus examination was normal initial investigations showed his creatinine to be 0.7 the total protein levels were very low 4.9 and the serum albumin was 1.9 he had 3 plus glucose in the urine and 4 plus protein in the urine and the quantification showed a up by uc ratio of 14.77 so this is a patient presenting with sudden abrupt onset of proteinuria he has got uh, edema hypoalbuminemia proteinuria so what is your diagnosis syndromic diagnosis we can make is he has got nephrotic syndrome he also has a left pleural effusion so what is the etiology of the nephrotic syndrome is it diabetic nephropathy or does he have an underlying glomerular disease what are the factors against diabetic nephropathy in this patient he has got an abrupt onset of proteinuria he has massive proteinuria and he doesn't have any other microvascular complications so in this setting you will always think of a non diabetic renal disease what are the other investigations his lipid profile showed that his lipids were badly deranged so in a patient who has got proteinuria hypoalbuminemia a uh, presence of significant dyslipidemia would suggest the presence of a primary glomerular disease causing a nephrotic syndrome diabetic can have dyslipidemia but if the lipid profile is out of proportion to what you would expect then you, you should consider a glomerular disease in these patients the other investigation in this patient showed that he had fairly well controlled diabetes his blood borne virus screen was negative complement levels were normal and there were no monoclonal proteins which are detected so we proceeded for a renal biopsy his renal biopsy showed market glo global capillary wall thickening you can see that within the glomeruli the capillary walls are quite thickened actually the thickness of the glomerular capillary wall is almost similar to that of the tubular basement membrane that's how you know that the capillary wall is thickened and the immunofluorescence showed a diffuse granular uh, capillary wall staining of igg and c3 and these features are consistent with a membranous nephropathy so this is a patient presenting with nephrotic syndrome in a diabetic let's look at the next case scenario 61 year old lady diabetic and hypertensive since 2017 who had a baseline creatinine of 0.7 in jan 2020 presented with periorbital swelling since february 2021 in april 2021 she had a documented creatinine of 1.5 elsewhere she complained of paresthesia of both her feet a biothesiometry showed severe loss of vibration sense uh, bilaterally at presentation to, to cmc she her blood pressure was high she had uh, periorbital edema there was no pedal edema fundus examination was normal she had loss of fine touch and vibration up to the ankles bilaterally her renal functions done here creatinine had, uh, had increased to 2.8 mg per cent urine routine showed proteinuria 3 plus no active urine sediments and uh, the up by uc ratio was 4.3 so is this diabetic uh, nephropathy patient has got diabetes she has got uh, renal failure she has got peripheral neuropathy but is this diabetic nephropathy so you should always plot the the gfrs over time so if you look at the creatinine in jan 2020 it was 0.7 the gfr was 87 april 2021 there was a drop in gfr to 37 and subsequently in october the gfr dropped to 17.5 so even though the absolute increase in the creatinine might seem very small the drop in gfr is quite significant So, if you plot the GFRs over time, this will help you in differentiating a non-diabetic renal disease from diabetic nephropathy. In this patient, clearly, you should suspect the non-diabetic renal disease because the rate of decline of GFR is much rapid than what you would expect in a diabetic nephropathy. So, what's your uh, diagnosis? You would give a syndromic diagnosis. You can say it's a chronic kidney disease because the disease has been progressing more than three months, but it is uh, rapidly worsening. And patient also has got a peripheral neuropathy. So, what can cause renal disease along with uh, neuropathy? etiologically we should consider a consider a vasculitis in this patient immune complex uh, glomerulonephritis like sle cryoglobulinemia can have neuropathy and renal involvement 
monoclonal uh, diseases can have renal involvement and neuropathies. And lastly, diabetes should uh, also be kept as a differential. In this lady, further investigations showed that the uh, complement titers were normal, anchor titers were normal. Electrophoresis, however, showed a band in the gamma region. Her urine benzos pro benzones proteins were negative, but her immunofixation electrophoresis showed a uh, IgG lambda. Bone marrow, there was no clear evidence of a myeloma, but there were focal increase in the mature plasma cells. So we proceeded with a renal biopsy in this patient. The renal biopsy showed, light microscopy showed a nodular glomerulosclerosis. But this is not the nodular glomerulosclerosis of diabetic nephropathy. The immunofluorescence pattern showed strong staining of IgG along the tubular basement membrane and glomerular mesangium. And the electron microscopy showed fine amorphous powdery deposits in the subendothelial region. So these are features that are consistent with a monoclonal immune deposition, immune deposition disease. In this patient, probably a heavy chain deposition disease. So nodular glomerulosclerosis is not only seen in diabetic nephropathy, but can be seen in other diabetic, other kidney diseases as well. One such kidney disease is, a, is what is called as a monoclonal immune deposition disease. It is a type of MGRS. So the third case is a 58-year-old male, diabetic for 10 years on OHAs who presented with a sudden, abrupt uh, reduction in the urine output and bilateral lower limb swelling of one week duration associated with breathing difficulty. He didn't have any hematuria, color colored urine, there was no fever, dysuria. Examination wise, his blood pressure was 180 by 100. He had pitching edema up to the knees. He had bibasal crepitations and diminished breath sounds. Um, his in initial investigations showed a hemoglobin of 10.5 and a creatinine of 7.9. Albumin was 3.2. He had microscopic hematuria. He also had uh, proteinuria 2 plus and this, uh, he had a subnephrotic proteinuria, UP by UC of 1.4. So what is this presentation? What is the syndromic diagnosis? There is an acute onset of oliguria, edema, hypertension with proteinuria and microscopic hematuria. So this is, this fits in with the definition of an acute nephrotic syndrome. So what are the differentials of an acute nephrotic syndrome? Commonly, you should, you should consider an infection related glomerular nephritis. IgA ne nephropathy, a sin pharyngetic illness can be considered in this patient. Further investigations showed that patient had a low C3 level with a normal C4 level, which is a feature that is seen in infection-related glomerular nephritis because of activation of the alternate complement pathway. The ASO and the ADNB titers were no, uh, the ADNB titers were elevated, ANA was negative. So keeping in mind a diagnosis of an infection-related glomerular nephritis, we proceeded with a renal biopsy. Now, what does this renal biopsy show? It shows a diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis. As compared to the previous biopsy, you can see that the capillary loops are all occluded with uh, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and other exudates. So this is a feature. This is the biopsy finding is that of a diffuse proliferative glom glomerular nephritis and a particular pattern called as exudative glomerular nephritis, which is characteris characteristically seen in infection-related glomerular nephritis. So I've taken you through three common diseases that can be present. In diabetics, they can develop a nephrotic syndrome, they can develop an acute nephritic syndrome, or they may have a rapid worsening renal failure, in which case you should suspect a non-diabetic renal disease. So coming to my conclusions, not all kidney disease in diabetics is diabetic nephropathy. We should try and identify non-diabetic renal disease uh, in diabetics who present with atypical presentations, who, patients who have a rapid worsening of their renal functions. Having said that, uh, non-glomerular uh, non diseases are much more common than uh, glomerular diseases in this population. Absence of diabetic retinopathy may have a predictive value, but only in the correct clinical scenario. And it is important to identify non-diabetic renal disease in these patients because non-diabetic renal diseases can sometimes be reversed in an otherwise progressive disease. Thank you.